like many men of genius, they have a singular inability to deal with the more ordinary daily incidents. During the heat wave, this curious inability to condition our situations became a positive tragic. His bodily surface, all readily broad, seemed to expand to meet it and his imagination to become a part of his body so that the one dripped words of distress and the others gave moisture. Always uneasy about his health, he became visibly anxious in hot weather. And this anxiety added so much to his suffering that his state was pitiful. Electric fans, ice drinks, and cold baths seemed to give no relief. And finally, we discovered that the only time his visit was incessant motoring. While we were moving, he was refreshed and happy. His spirits rose. The twinkling returns to her lips and eyes, and we never halt it, except for cheese on the high hillside, or for a cooling drink at a village apothecary. Older inhabitants of Berkshire will remember the mistress of the mount, whirling about the dusty roads in her big automobile, moving in the same glow that surrounded so many of the cottagers. I didn't realize that she was a woman of subtlety as well as perception, a woman whose own lot was far from happy and carefree one that from the happy and carefree one may ascribe to her. If one of her visitors was to write quotes, it was an amusing, a delightful house to stay in, not a bit sophisticated in its atmosphere full of gaiety and fun out of a simple sort. They laughed until we cried. Another was to write of another side of this complex woman. Quote, in the last analysis, her personal qualities did not disable Edith Wharton in the discovery of her own kind of work. If she found the human beings inadequate, if her emotional expectations were unfulfilled, she was all the more shocked in her definition of human frustration, irony and detachment, her way of meeting her own fate were her artistic moods.